Alright. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Hope you guys are enjoying your holiday season as we're getting into it a little bit. You know, it's been a while, a long while since I've done one of these, you know. And we'll get to all that in a minute. But hey, hey, listen. I'm trying to stay in the festive mood. Look, look. Can y'all see that? I got my little festive hat here. It says Chay Mo one there. And uh, I got my tree back there. And, you know, that's about as festive as I'm going to get <laughs> for Christmas. And no, I'm not putting that on. Because evidently, the older you get, the bigger your head gets. And I'm not putting that on because y'all ain't going to be making fun of me when I'm trying to share this message on Christmas. Now, listen... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get on. And I was, like I said, it's been a while. And there's reasons. And uh, I don't even know if I'm going to have enough time to really say what I want to say. But I need to say it. And I have to say it and I have to get it out. Because it's like, I'm trying to live on, get on my life. There's some other things I got to do, man. There's some things I got to get to. But it's like, as I'm trying to get to it, it's like having a, 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 a pebble. A hard rock pebble caught in between your pinky toe and your other feet. And you're trying to run and you're trying to keep going. So you just got to stop for a minute, take your shoe off, get rid of the pebble, and get back on the road. And this is me stopping and getting rid of the pebble so I can get back on the road. As we are close out the new year or whatever, you know, I've been telling you guys a long time ago that, or for a while now that I have a story that needs to be told. And I need to get this story out. I'm not sure what part I'm going to... I think I'm going to start, like... Not at the beginning, beginning, but at like chapter eight, section C, right? About how it, how this whole thing blew into what it's blown into and how I fought it and won. Now, that's not to say that, um, this battle was fought by myself. But let me let me let me back up just a little bit to give you some of the perplexities of growing up in Dallas. Uh, Dallas really didn't have its its civil rights revolutionary period until the 80s. And that's right around the time when I got here, back when John Wiley Price was out there protesting and we're, we're doing sit-ins, and you see all the guys in downtown Dallas, you know blocking streets and all stuff right here is for equal rights and voting rights and uh, 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 desegregation, uh, gentrification. That's back when Park Road was just, you know, it was it was something. Back when South Dallas was really something and uh, they were fighting to get that uh, those mandates up to code and all stuff right here. But anyway, Dallas had a DA who ran Dallas for 36 years. And this is why during the 60s, you didn't hear a lot about, you know, civil rights movements coming out of Dallas. It wasn't that they wasn't taking place. It was that it was getting squashed before it even got started. Uh, from 1951 to 1986, 87, for 36 years, Dallas's DA was Henry Wade. You may know him from, well, that name sounds familiar because he prosecuted Jack Ruby and uh, the guy who shot one of the Kennedys, I think. And then, uh, of course, Roe versus Wade and the uh, the abortion laws. That's him. And he ran Dallas for 36 years. And it was a network of good old boy system that had the mantra, convict at all costs. Which pretty much meant that from that time period, if you got arrested, you're going to jail. It's done. It's a wrap. The only thing that you were negotiating is time, right? And to understand the depths of how 36 years of convict at all costs mantra affect the lives of the disenfranchised, there's, there is no code blue that will even come close to it. We're talking about not just the police. We're talking about the district attorney's office. We're talking about judges. We're talking about lawyers from all backgrounds who ever had their cases in Dallas had to run through this Henry Wade system. And of course, it spread out to his minions. So it wasn't just when he retired in 86 or 87. His way of 
convictions went right on through for decades. And it still carried on. It's, it tried to get squashed out when Craig Watkins took over. You know, they called him the Hugger Club DA or whatever. And I got to tell you something. If I'm keeping 100, I can keep 100. Sometimes never meet your heroes. I'll just leave it like that. But, mm, you know, he tried to squash it out. And he came up with the, the Conviction Integrity Program, going back and looking at different cases. You know, uh, he, he's the one who started the, uh, the Innocence Project. That started actually here in Dallas under, under uh, Craig Watkins as he took over DA because he knows how jacked up that whole system of Henry Wade convicted all costs was. And a lot of the guys who went to high school with me, if you see a lot of our guys that really fell off, especially that class of 88, well, it's because they got caught up in this. You got to realize, you know, this is back when Ferguson was still, you know, southeast side and pre-64 days or whatever. This is when you had real Crips, you had real Bloods, you had real Jamaicans running shit down here. You know what I mean? So if you got caught up, you got caught up. And sometimes if you didn't get caught up, you still got caught up. So a lot of our guys got lost in that system, in that way of living, in that life. And this, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't even fair. So anyway, this is the mantra that's set in the Dallas, Texas area and has been for 36 years, right on up, hell, right on up through. <laughs> it, it may be slowing down now with uh, Chief Rodriguez, or Chief, what about our chief police is right now? Is that Ramirez, Rodriguez? You know, he's trying to do his thing. So, you know, I'm leave it alone, make it do what he do. So, anywho, during this time, I was accused of the worst of crimes. And in this accusation that was thrown against me, it put our whole family in a, in a terrible circumstance. I could fight it, but that means children would be affected. And you protect your kids at all costs, man. So, no, that wasn't an option. So, anywho, I'm figuring that, you know, listen, as long as they keep doing their investigation and do police work, they'll figure out, you know, what's really going on. <laughs> I was unfamiliar with the mantra, convicted all costs. I found all this out, of course, while I'm in the system. So, anywho, it comes time for me to stand before the judge. And my lawyers, and this went from a, a simple battery or assault case, simple assault where you, you know, touch somebody, you can, go to, you can go to jail for that if you do that. And somebody convicts you or cries out or whatever, but you can actually get a case over that to being what it was. Now, I'm not going to name what it is because evidently, you know, there's a, Facebook has a thing about certain keywords and all this stuff right here, such as so-and-so. So I'm not going to say what it is, but I became a, uh, a victim of it of the system in itself. And as I stood before the judge, or before I got in front of the judge, my lawyer says I have four options, right? Option number one, you can take this case and present it before a judge and jury. And, <laughs> and jury, that's funny. Uh, anywho, you can take it before a judge who's ready to hear your case right now but doesn't have a lot of background with these types of offenses. And if you're found guilty, it's a minimum that you do go to jail. You, you will go to jail anywhere between two to 20 years. And since he's not familiar with these type of cases, he's gonna give you the higher end of those 20 years. You can go for a judge that hears these type of cases all the time. And he can actually probably see through what's going on. But again, convicted all costs. It's, it's running this thing. It had, listen, for 36 years, the convicted all cost policy had a 96% conviction rate. Let that sink in. For 36 years, if you were arrested in Dallas County and went to a Dallas judge 
you were going to be convicted 96% of the time for 36 years. That's, that's insane. So anyway, judge number two, he hears these type of cases all the time. He'll be able to see through it, but convicted all costs, he'll probably give you the lower end of the, uh, the convictions. Option number three, you can go before a bench judge. This is a judge that just hears the case directly out. No jury. The judge decides. And you gotta take the chance with his mood and, and how he's feeling, and how he thinks about you, and you know, that's a hell of a gamble. And if he's found you guilty, you know, he'll he'll reach in his pocket, throw some change in the air, and however many of the coins that land right there, whatever that number amounts to, that's the number of years you're gonna get. He says he's seen him done all the time. He sees him do it all the time. And there's some, there's some guys out there that can vouch for this shit. Dallas was wild, man. That, Dallas was absolutely wild. But anyway, option number four. You accept the plea deal, which was 10 years and lifetime registration. And... Whew. You'll be dubbed a, a SO for the rest of your life. Mm, but you get probation. Ooh, that hurt. But what the first thing is, you gotta, you gotta, you always gotta look the family first, right? So, you know, the wife and I talked about it within that time period we had to talk about it and then we decided that the plea deal was gonna be the best way to go. So he took the plea deal. And when he took the plea deal, you know, when you sign your name to that shit and, and you see what they're labeling you, and you still on, you know, mm, you still don't realize the full impact of what that label is and what comes with that label. Oh. Man, that was crazy, yo. But uh, we'll, we'll get into all that later. But when you got to fight something like this, the first thing you got to do, you know, I, I remember signing off on that stuff, and then you know, Judge Banks gavel, and and just like that, they they changed it from ten to seven. It's like that. Hey, let's give him seven. Right then, while I was standing in front of the judge, I'm like, y'all just playing with these numbers like, like, whoa. That's it's just mm. anywho. So so it was seven and uh lifetime. So I'm a sore now. I'm a lifetime sore. So I'm standing there, and the and the power that's going through me. It's like, what the hell just happened? And I'm standing there and, and, and Frank Riley, and I'm, I'm looking like on, on the seventh floor and I'm looking out through this window. And it's like, you know, my wife is right there. And I feel this. First it was, it was vulnerability and then it was fuck you. It went from being very, very vulnerable, being very, very like, what the fuck? And then it built up and 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 it was like, fuck you. I'm not what you say I am. But I know what I said I was going to do. So they give you seven days to sign your name down there. I went down there the same day. This shit. As soon as the case is over, went right down there. Signed up. This is what the judge says I am, fuck you. Now the fight begins. Now, if you have a fight like this, the first thing you have to do, the first requirement in my eyes, because I'm accountable to uh, not just the family, but those who I, I represent. So I had a family meeting. I, I first had a meeting when I first got arrested. And I told everybody in the immediate circle what was going on. But after this, you know, I had a, a meeting with them. And I had to, 
I'm accountable to those who say they love me and that they're my brothers and all the stuff right here. I'm accountable to them. You know what I mean? I've run with some real dudes, man. I've run with some concrete niggas, bro. So with that being said, how how would how am I representing the strength of our family if I let them walk around here not knowing nothing from nothing, but then somebody pulls them on the side of the street and be like, yo, man, you know your boys are sore, you know? They're like, what? Nah, that's not gonna happen. So I explained to them exactly what happened, how it happened, and what the deal is. Very close knit server. I, I guess it was about seven, eight of us in there. Look, we dead in my eye. Hell of a minute, man. Dab me up the whole night. They had my back. You know, I was breaking down a little bit, such as so and so. And, uh, well, it, it's like, you know, fight your fight, bro. And they just kind of circled the wagons around me and allowed me to fight my fight. Because they know me. They know exactly who I am. They know exactly what I'm about. I always love them for it. It is what it is. They know that. I, I told them that. And, uh, so the fight is now on. And I'm, I'm chopping this up because I'm trying to get to a to a point of ground about understanding about society's views and, and not being so quick to judge people and uh, understanding that not all circumstances or labels are what they are. There's this great movie that Sandra Bullock did and our whole team is called The uh, Unforgivable. You guys should check it out on Netflix. It shows exactly a lot about what goes on as far as the system, how people are immediately ostracized. I was going to say that online, but I, I just don't know how to spell ostracized. Is that an ostrich? Is that like an O? Is that an A? I didn't feel like racking my brain to try to figure it out either. I just can't spell it. But ostracized, where you put on the outskirts of society and demified by all of society. You know, you, you, you can't work, you can't, can't live within certain areas, and all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's bad, man. And you got to tell everybody to. You know what I mean? I remember, uh, you know, I kept on the low and I kept working all the stuff right here about being a sore. And uh, I got a call one morning. This is, So this is all taking place about, about, I guess about maybe two and a half, three years go by. And I'm on a job. I didn't tell my people on the job nothing. It ain't that fucking business. And I kept right on working, kept doing what I'm doing. I get a phone call one morning, I'm getting ready to go to work. It's from one of my homegirls. Yo, yo, listen. Everybody needs to... Your people around you are a reflection of exactly who you are. Always remember that. Always remember that. The people you associate with, you look at them, they reflect you. All right? That's exactly how other people look at you. So I had a homegirl. She called me up and kept it 100. She's like, check. They up here passing your information around here saying that you're a sore and all this stuff right here, such as so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, everybody in the office knows. So I want you to know, when you get up here, this is exactly what, what's going on up here. I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. And I was telling that and the other, such as so-and-so. HR knows and all this stuff right here. And yo, yo. During this fight for innocence, I had to take three polygraphs. Three, not one, not two, three. I took three polygraphs, including the instant defense polygraph. Now, I don't give a damn what, what nobody says. I don't care what top CIA agent you know. I don't give a damn about no, no, no top cop, no, no, no FBI, whatever. You cannot be a polygraph test. You can't. You can't. They, your body is allergic to lying. And that's the whole basis of, of polygraphs. So they keep the, the questions very simple. They keep them very direct. And it's yes or no. And they, the, the thing is on your fingers. They strap this thing around your chest. You're sitting on a pad. Your feet are on a pad. They have a heat level of uh, that reads your heat. You got another another camera that reads your eye movement. 
It's mind boggling. So I don't, I don't care what you say. You take one and then you show me where you're lying and then you bring it back to me and show that you passed by lying. You, you can't beat it. You can't. It's science, bro. It's absolute science, right? Like COVID. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just scratch that. The last one. <laughs> but um, I took three of them and passed all three, including the instant fence polygraph. Right? Y'all look that up and find out what it is. It's basically direct questioning about the incident that took place. So I'm past, past all these polygraphs. Uh, I, I'm not even, normally when, you, when you're when you sore, you have to go to, to, to group therapy. And listen, I'll tell you something. Therapy is good, yo. I, they, they initially put me in for therapy because, you know, as part of the probationary period, you got to go see a counselor while you're on probation. The counselor kicked me out in 16 months. All right, was it 18 months? Yes, yeah, 18 months. He kicked me out. You don't, you don't, you don't belong here. So, <laughs> what the fuck, man? I was happy. I'm like, man, man you got to do it like that, bro. <laughs> but, anyway, but therapy is good. Therapy is good. I ended up getting a lot of stuff off my chest that I didn't even realize I had on my chest. And it allowed me to continue, allowed me to go on. So, 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 so sometimes when things happen, it happens for a reason. So you can actually talk about some things, get it out, and uh, get on to life. A little better life. So, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. So, I've taken three polygraphs. But when I went up to the job and all the stuff right here, and I walked into that office... Man, when you talk about, as soon as I walked in, you could hear pins. It was like, uh, as soon as I walked in. Uh. All eyes on me. And I knew why all eyes on me, because I had my homegirl call me and tell me that exactly what was going on. Right when I walked in and sat down, she comes up and she walks over, she looks directly at me. That's right. So I'm like, fuck these people. But that's, that's a... That's a hell of a feeling. That's a hell of a feeling. That so that everybody in that office now knows your darkest secret. And it's untrue. I didn't last for maybe two minutes in there. I got a call from HR. HR telling me to come to the office. And I tell HR everything. Everything. I'm in there, I got, you know, I'm fighting for my job. I mean, I got a, I got a, a household to maintain, yo. Yeah. Kids are in school and all that stuff, I guess this is so so. Bye bye, get fired. Mm. Cool. Fuck you. Mm. That was tough. That was tough. So I come down here and, you know, I mean, call the wife, tell her what's going on, and, and you can't get another job because it's the preface that you're required. If you lose your job, you got to go back down there to that office. You got to tell them you lost your job. If you get another job and they happen to hire you, you got to go back down to that office and tell them you got another job. And they're going to come up to that office and make sure that you actually have that job. So before you get that job, before you accept the job, you got to tell them what your status is, what your what your criminal status is. And, of course, if you tell them that you're a sore, they're not going to hire you. All right. So... That was crazy. Anyway, crazy. That was crazy. Anyway, I get, I have RK in going, right? So I'm like, all right, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything I am into RK in. We had the, uh, we had like four or five radio shows, and uh, we had a good online presence. We had like a subscription over five thousand people online. So so. Okay, so I'm gonna get products and we you know you know I'm start, you know, selling it that way, such as so and so. And it was going good for a while. All right. And then, you know, I, I learned other ways to make money. And, you know. <laughs> now okay now, you know. But back then it was a struggle and all this stuff right here. When you first learned it, you know what I mean? So I'm in there and I'm arcade and I'm doing my thing and such and so and so and all my stuff is based online, right? And as I'm doing this and I got the whole thing going and rocking and rolling, I catch wind 
that somebody in the hip hop community found out that I was a sore and started spreading it around. So right then, right there, as soon as I heard about it, I had to call a meet, I had to call a business meet. So I had to make sure that everybody associated with RKN, they're not walking around blind to it. So right here in this room, I had about another, you know, like I said, I had the one meeting already, but I had a family meeting, and now I have, like, family A1, right? Because you love the people that you're working with, and that's why you're working with them, because I love them, man. They ain't in my house, and it is what it is, man. We're family. So I explained to them everything that happened. Wife standing right next to me. I showed them my polygraph test. I showed them all my paperwork. <laughs> Some of them didn't even want to look at the paperwork. Like, right? whatever. And uh, they understood. They got it. It, it took them by surprise, of course. Because, you know, we, we got that thing rolling like it ain't nothing. You know what I mean? Like nothing's wrong. And that's exactly how it should be. Like I said, I'm not what the court says I am. But I accepted what I accepted, and I'm going to have to play that game while I'm proving that I'm not what they said I am. So, you know, one of the people that was in this room, and this is why you got to be careful of the people that you, you associate yourself with, but it's great to go through trauma as immense as that was. <laughs> it shows you exactly who the people are that you're fucking with. It shows you exactly who the people are that you are fucking with. Going through trauma is good. It's good. So this meeting concludes. And, you know, like, you know I, I, I go in the kitchen. I give everybody the time to digest what's going on, all the stuff right here. One of those people that was here was Dre, was Andre, Dre, child call Sat right here, heard everything I said, saw all my paperwork and everything. There's a reason why I bring him up. You, we'll get to that. And once everything settles down and all the stuff right here, so, 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 about five, ten minutes later, everybody starts walking in one by one, one by one, one by one, including Dre. Comes up, dashed me up, says, don't worry about it, bro. You going through it. You know, it is what it is. Fight your fight, man. I'm here. It's all good. I'm like, cool. I appreciate that. Because he's dating my sister at the time. And I don't know if they had a kid back then. Back then one. I don't know if Phoenix was here now. I think Phoenix was here. Yeah, he was here. He was here. But anyway. He's one of the ones that dashed me up, right? Yeah. So, anywho, time goes on, and they, they, you know, before that meeting was over, you know, a couple of the soldiers, they were like, yo, how you want us to handle it? I just like, hey, listen, we already know who it was, who, who was talking. Just tell them to cut it out. Tell them to stop talking. This is the only warning. He only gets one warning. Tell them to stop talking. End it right there. And that's exactly what happened. So if anything other than that happened from that, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with that. We ain't got nothing to do with that. Just to clear the air on that. So anyway, uh, time goes on. Rock and roll. Like I say, you know, <clears throat> the RKN thing is done, so, 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 and so. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows what they're walking into. And all stuff right here. But I feel a certain way about it, to be honest with you. Uh, so I shut it down. You know why RK ended? That's why. That's why, because I, I don't... Listen, if you love somebody, man, you protect them from the shit. You know what I mean? And I love my RK and family. They know that. So it's like, I don't need them walking around on tiptoes wondering, you know, next time they, they're they in the streets and somebody's coming up saying, man, I heard Raku is a sword and all the stuff right here. You fucking with that nigga like that? Yo, yo, what? I don't need We don't need all that. They don't need that in their lives. They already have enough going on. You know what I mean? The show, show was a great success and everybody had a lot of fun. And we're still all bonded and we're still very much close to this day. And a lot of these guys, they, they, they've continued on and they're doing pretty well. So it's all well and good. It's, it's all good. It's all love. 
but I didn't want them carrying that burden of having to look, you know, over their shoulders to, to wonder if somebody's talking about this, then to wonder if they're going to find them. Nah, they don't need all that. All right, we had to run, let shut this motherfucker down. The ways that I'm learning to make money now, it's, it's, it's okay. But it's not fully blown yet, but it's, it's okay. So I can still, I can still do the merchandise and all the stuff right here, and I can still do, you know, online, you know, like little blips like this, whatever. And uh, that's gone because I guess a year or two goes by. Yeah, maybe something like that. But anywho. Uh, we decided to make a, uh, a video. Yeah. Me and Junior. Not my son, but my brother. We talked about it and decided to make a video to tell everybody what was really going on out there in the world to give us some inspiration about how to keep your head up and how to keep fighting because, you know, he was inspired by hearing what was going on with me and how I'm handling it and seeing how the house is still running and how everything's still going. So we talked about it, he was like, man, yeah, you need to share that story, bro. People need to hear this, man. Because folks are going through, they going through it. You know what I mean? So I released that video. When I released that video, the girl of Dreek, who I've only met once, I don't know this lady from Adam. And I definitely don't want to know her dumbass. But anyway, she takes it upon herself to watch that video and report it to Facebook, right? I just told you, Dre just heard everything that was going on with me and he allowed her to do this. Then he goes on and brings my name up to a judge for a court case that I ain't got nothing to do with, right? He's telling the judge that I'm a sore and he doesn't want his kid around me and this, that, and this. I'm like, yo. Now, I understand, you know, how cases work and all the shit right here. But keep my name out of it, bro. I ain't got nothing to do with your shit. But he put it in front of the judge. That was just, that's a whole ass niggas, bro. That's a whole ass nigga move, bro. This nigga's a felon, too. That's why his broke ass can't get no job. Because this nigga writes forgery checks. Hey, yeah, nigga, fuck you. He writes forgery checks. He got a criminal conviction on that shit. That's why his ass can't go get a real job and work at a real company because he's a fucking felon too. Hmm. Run tell that, nigga. Now, that being said, this girl he's with, Satori, the girl he's with, hi, Amanda. She's the one that's paying all his bills and all this so 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 he's the one that's living with, that's why they got married because he's a broke ass nigga can't stand on his own two feet so she got to support him through her whack ass business and uh she doesn't want to play child support no more because he ain't got no job he ain't paying enough so she's the one that's telling this whole ass nigga to put my name in front of the judge and he doesn't dipshit that ain't who that's just, it, again, like I say, it just shows type people that you're working with, that you're fucking with. And I'm, I'm kind of glad of that. I'm kind of glad it got exposed, right? But Satori goes ahead and reports my name to Facebook and reports a video. Uh, don't worry about it. In the comment section, I told you a long time ago in one of my original posts that I had people, as I was fighting my case, I had people that you were talking to that you thought were your people who were really my people. And they're telling me everything. And they're sending me all the DM screenshots of your bitch ass yapping about this, that, and the other. Talking down on my neck. You do not know me. I sure as hell don't know and want to know you. But you felt it upon yourself that, you know, this is what you want to do. She even got mad. Yo, check this out. She even got mad at one of my partners for liking my sister's picture. And tried to have words with him about liking my sister's picture. She's not even his girl, yo. So, yeah, yeah. 
you know, things got to, I'll let him say whatever he has to say if he wants to say about it, you know what I mean? But know that we know about it. That's how off this broad is. So, uh, anywho, you, you, you check the, the comment section. You'll see a couple of emails. <laughs> this dingy bitch. <laughs> she tries to be so anonymous. She tries to speak as Andre when she talking about the dream. She tries to speak as him. Like, I don't know. Like, I've been around this nigga for 10 years, yo. I know exactly who Andre is. You know what I mean? This nigga, I mean, hey, man, listen. His car broke down. That's me picking his ass up, taking his ass to work. We work the same place, such a so and so. I'm picking him up from work, or picking him up to go to work, dropping him off after work, such a so and so. Taking him to the studio. He didn't even know Dallas had a hip hop scene. Tell I hooked up with him. And I put him on. And say, man, this is such a so and so. Yo, this is such a so and so. Went down to a final Friday. He was like, oh, shit. Anyway, whole ass nigga. But puts my name in front of the judge. Whole ass nigga. He's soft, bro. He's soft. So, anywho, not even worth my time, bro. Anywho, uh, they report my shit, and then when they report my shit, Facebook cuts off my page, including my business page that I was making money on. That's some whole ass shit, bro. That's some whole ass shit. I don't know. I don't even want to. Point being, you got to watch who you fuck with, man. Embrace trauma. And embrace hard times. Because it shows you exactly who the people are that you're surrounding yourself with. And it showed me exactly what this whole ass nigga drinks about. And what this whole ass bitch Satori is all about. And if they fucking with you, if you fucking with them, you better watch your back. You better be careful. Because like I said, I don't even know her. And imagine what she'll do to people that she does know that she'll manipulate into doing some things that are stupid. Now, anyway, and like I said, in the comment section, she sent an email trying to talk like she's Andre because she sent me an a email about some some shit that Drake was doing. I don't, listen, say, listen, I don't subscribe to anything y'all do. Nothing. But she saw at the time that there was a time when me and Drake were talking and he had my old email address. And she felt as though it was okay for her to sign me up to one of their subscription pro program email subscriptions or whatever so I can see exactly what's going on. And they just happened to send this to me out the blue. I'll tell you how I know them. So they send me this shit and I reply, all right, listen, don't send me this bullshit. I don't give a damn what Dre's doing. And she replies, oh, as a matter of fact, I said, Amanda, don't send me anything that has to do with your business. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, well, you must have been, I'll unsubscribe you or whatever professionally. I'm like, bitch, I didn't sign up for your piece of shit ass company email. So there's no way that you need to unsubscribe me from anything. And her dumb ass doesn't know that you can just click, how did you get this email? Or how did you subscribe? And it shows you who's, who, who signed you up. War Media signed up my email address. War Media is Amanda Satori, whatever the fuck her name is, business. So, you dumb bitch, it shows right there you signed me up for the email. That's how I got the email, and hence why I ended up checking your ass. Check the comment section, it's all right there. So again, watch who y'all fuck with, man. Watch who y'all fuck with. All that being said. I get kicked off Facebook, and it is what it is, such a so-and-so. It just, it just emburdens my passion to continue fighting. Oh, this feels good. It feels good to get this off my chest. Oh, my God. Whew. Therapy is great. But, anyway, um, throughout this whole process, There's a, there's a way that the state realizes through the uh, Innocence Project and actually through um, Conviction Integrity 
they found out that there's a lot of people that are that are sores that have no business being sores. I mean, they, they had it up to close to 1,800 people. So they put in, they put in this uh, process, and it's an intense process. But if you go through it, and the, the, the chances of getting through this thing is so minuscule, they, they don't even keep track of it. They, 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 they put in this process to where you have to go to a state evaluator, you have to do a, a national background check, you have to do a local background check, you have to do a, a federal background check. Uh, if you pass all that, then you subscribe to the next level. The next level is getting cleared by the state to actually go into this program. And as you get cleared by the state to go into that program, you got to go see a state-approved therapist. That state-approved therapist is I-N-T-N-S. So I had to get a therapeutic session from this, well, a psychological session that lasted for close to six and a half hours. And it's just me and him, one-on-one. -on -one. And he's breaking down my mental, how I think. And he's like, well, I'm going to tell you right off the jump, you know, uh, less than, what do you say, 6% of the people who actually qualify for this program, less than 6% get past me or get gets approved. And you already have two things that are already counting against you. And uh, what do you say is my age? And uh, I forget what the other thing was. And if you get, yeah, yeah, that's it. He said, you already got one thing counting against you. And if you miss two, then you don't get, you're out. You don't, you don't pass. So I already had one that was against me and it was my age. Yeah, I guess they feel if you're setting your weight, you're setting your weight. So it is what it is. So again, I go through this whole process and pass. The state doesn't know what to do. <laughs> the state doesn't know what to do because you're not supposed to pass. Especially when I already have one thing that was against me. And it's all legal and, and we sent it down to because uh, he's, you know, when his evaluation was over, he's like, yo, <laughs> yo, this dude needs to not be a sore. And he sent that information down to the state <clears throat> in Austin. And the, the, the council in Austin, they have to review all this stuff, right? So all this takes time. It's a process. No stuff right here. I get the state seal back and so, 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 and so. And now I take it and working for the judge. And that's, that didn't go well because the judge didn't know what to do. Because he doesn't, you don't, you're not supposed to come off. Nobody is supposed to not be a sore once you're a sore. They know they got this thing in, in place, but nobody's supposed to pass it. <laughs> well, I told you I'm not what you said I am. They knew. It takes some years and a couple of attorneys. And finally, I got that phone call. We're going for the judge. And after 13 years, eight months, 22 days, The state confirmed that I am not what they said I am. I was. The following day, I get a phone call from Austin. And they didn't know how to 
explain it to me other than congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. We're going to be taking your name off of this, off of that, off of that, off of that, off of that. I'm, I'm finding it hard to believe. So I go down to the actual uh, check-in place in Dallas. Uh, we ain't got nothing on you down here. <laughs> Passports, <laughs> got my driver's license, got my passport, me and babe about to do some traveling. I may get a get a couple of surf lessons in. I always wanted to surf. I mean, how many want to learn how to surf? I don't know. I'm gonna go to Greece, maybe uh France. Yeah. France has some great islands. Italy. I'm going to go to Egypt. Spend some time there. China. Canada. Oi! Hey, man! <laughs> I'm going to have some fun, man. I'm going to get ghosts. Well, I'm going to get ghosts. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful world. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I know how to make money. <laughs> God, just leave it alone. I'll leave it like that. I'm okay. It's full circle. I believe I have uh, removed the pebble. And I'm going to get all my life. So there you go. How I'm going to release this, how it's going to come out, I don't know. I know you guys have a short attention span, so I may just chop this up into like five or six pieces. <laughs> but anywho, anywho, feels fantastic, feels awesome. I'm gonna do some living, so uh, you know you catch me when you can. I'm I'm here now. Trust, I'm gonna be out in the near future in the. Uh, me and baby girl are going to do some traveling. We're going to see some things. We're going to have some fun. And to my day ones, to my homegirl from the job, to my homegirl who tipped off the dude who was doing all that talking, to my real ones. I love y'all, man. I always will. And to those other two, hey, be gone. Pathetic. And uh, y'all should learn the lesson that I just shared with that. All right. Now, with all that being said, whew, God, I feel better. I'm so much better. It's like taking a 30 pound dookie. I am feeling light. I'm ready to get on and have a great day. All right, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, happy holidays. Stay blessed. Be the best. And as always, walk as one. Talk a lot, niggas never satisfied to somebody getting shot. Now the fucking laws coming, you can catch us burning knives. We fly with the one of the dies, see us chucking phones out. Who is rocking in this mother? Me mugging in this mother. Dickies crease, never thugging, foe hugging in this motherfucker. Black blowing, big bossing, 220 thick and swollen, no flossing. E rolling, kinda drunk, never falling. What they do is rock, who? Six four, ever true. Rock and E and TDC, thick gorillas from the zoo. Paper chasing is the mission. If I'm missing my intention, my condition, have you wishing, never been in this dimension, watch it, listen. 
One shot drop boss. Now they crown a new king. Foes up, safety's off. Feel it rattle. Diamond shining, wood grain. Auto climbing, corner stop. Trunk pop, K switch, cash drop. Never stopping with a hustle. Keeping depth is true muscle. Where your balls and your brains let you make it through the struggle. Come and tussle on the foe. I'm down to die for the foe. When it's all said and done, spread my ashes on the foe. Never give a fairy tale about the way we live. When I say another day on the foe, that's what it is, nigga.